When I was young, I fondly remember walking down the street, transistor radio in hand, feeling like the coolest kid on the block. It was the 1970s and decades before digital music and downloads by demand would even be considered a thing. Back in the day, I didn't know what song was going to come up, except on the AM radio station that I was listening to, it didn't matter. It was the experience of traveling with music that seemed so new, so innovative, and so modern. For many years and earlier times, the transistor radio was the only way to go if you wanted to take your music with you. Before the days of FM radio stations that dedicated hours to playing full albums, the transistor radio was the only way to go. AM radio, which was often the only option on these now obsolete devices, played top pop hits per the music charts of the moment, and we grooved along with the tunes, often while walking down the street or chilling outside. The first transistor radio for use in popular culture can be traced back to the company Texas Instruments in 1954. At that time, the rudimentary electronics that were used in these early models would lay the groundwork for more sophisticated devices decades later, those that had FM modulation as well as other bells and whistles. The transistor radio saw its rise in the early and mid-1950s when baby boomers were in the midst of their childhood and youth, just when rock and roll music was becoming popular. This new art form that appealed to the younger set was the perfect thing to irritate parents and older folks. And why not do it via this new device, the transistor radio? The music gods had surely come together to create this confluence and kids, teens and popular music would never be the same. Yet the radio wasn't just for music. When older folks did listen to them, they found out the latest news, some of it not always pleasant. Many a household can tell you where they were when they heard via their transistor radios the news of President John F. Kennedy's assassination in 1963 or the daily Watergate hearings updates just a decade later. Transistor radios had their heydays in the 60s and early 70s, with the former just take a look at any 1960s teen beach movie and you'll find the radio prominently displayed. In the 1970s, later on in the decade, more pressing pursuits and a general change in popular culture, think disco music, Saturday Night Fever and otherwise, shifted people's use and interest in receiving music through this once popular device. In the early 1980s, a new kid was in town and things would never be the same. The Sony Walkman hit the scene during this time and change was afoot. CD players and early digital technology as well put a pall over the interest in transistors because now one could listen to music in a solitary manner, headphones and all, a precursor to what we see today with smartphones and their headphones that block out the rest of the world. While these days, the use and even availability of transistors is small, they are used in the case of emergencies when power is down and the only option for information is through a battery-operated device. Today as well, we've got digital downloads, on-demand, and streaming music, and transistor radios seem to be an archaic item from another time. That being said, they were quite the item back in the day and served those of us who remember them well. Hey PTA Anners, if you like this episode or other episodes, please visit my Patreon page and become a patron of the podcast. Becoming a member will help grow the show and provide much more groovy stuff related to parenting, being a kid, growing up, then and now, and so much more. Check it out. You can go to the URL at patreon.com slash PTAN podcast. Stay groovy. Stay groovy.